Welcome to our news update. Today we have some interesting stories to share with you. First up. The China Embassy has removed remarks about ex-Soviet states. Moving on. A German general has called for F-16 jets to be promptly given to Ukraine. In other news. Iran has shipped 300,000 artillery shells and 1 million rounds of ammunition to Russia within six months, according to the WSJ. Additionally. World military spending has reached an all-time high of $2.24 trillion. On a different note, Taiwan will begin requiring female reservists to undergo military training. Lastly, Celebrity Cruises is being sued over a man who died on the ship and was placed in a drinks cooler. That's all for now, let's get started. Breaking news, folks. The China Embassy has removed remarks about ex-Soviet states. This is a big deal, especially considering the current political climate. I mean, who knows what kind of impact this could have on international relations. Well, Katie, it's certainly an interesting development. China has been expanding its influence in the region, and any change in their stance towards the former Soviet states could have far-reaching consequences. Ah, the Soviet Union. I remember when it was still around. Back in my day, we had to worry about the Cold War and the threat of nuclear annihilation. These days, it seems like everyone is more concerned with trade deals and economic sanctions. I think we need to look at this from a business perspective. China is a major player in the global economy, and any change in their policies could have a ripple effect on markets around the world. Speaking of markets, have you guys seen the latest numbers from Bloomberg? It's amazing how quickly things can change in the world of finance. One minute you're up, the next you're down. That's why it's so important to have a global perspective. We need to be aware of what's happening in every corner of the world, from New York to Hong Kong to Moscow. Indeed, Barack. As they say, the world is a small place. But it's also a complex one, with many different cultures, languages, and traditions. We must strive to understand each other if we hope to achieve peace and prosperity for all. Well, it looks like China won't be making any friends in the ex-Soviet states today. Speaking of friends, Germany's general seems to be feeling pretty generous towards Ukraine. Maybe he should send them a fruit basket along with those F-16s. Well, well, well. Looks like we have some breaking news tonight. Retired German General Erhard Buhler is calling for F-16 jets to be promptly given to Ukraine. This is a serious matter, folks. Yes, Barack, it seems like the situation in Ukraine is escalating. General Buhler is blaming the German government for not providing enough weapons and equipment to the Ukrainian armed forces. It's a classic case of cause and effect, Katie. The late decision of the German federal government to supply military equipment to Ukraine has prevented them from considering different measures, including multinational ones. And now we have a retired general calling for fighter jets to be given to Ukraine. This is a serious escalation of the conflict. Indeed, Elon. And it's not just any fighter jets, it's the American F-16 that General Buhler is calling for. He believes that Ukraine needs more ammunition for air defense and military aircraft. Well. I hope they don't ask Germany for planes, because according to General Buhler, they need the American F-16, which there are a lot of in the world. It's not just about the planes, Katie. General Buhler is advocating for Ukraine to be able to guarantee the security of their country themselves, in the long run. This is a complex issue that requires careful consideration. Well, I hope they don't ask me for rockets, because I'm not sure how that would help the situation. Well, it looks like Germany wants to give Ukraine some F-16s but it seems like Iran is already busy shipping enough ammo to start a small war. Talk about overachieving. Well, folks, we have some breaking news tonight. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that Russian ships have been transporting large quantities of Iranian-made artillery shells and other ammunition across the Caspian Sea to resupply Russian troops fighting in Ukraine. This is a concerning development for the United States and our allies, who are trying to disrupt cooperation between Moscow and Tehran. That's right, Barack. According to officials and documents seen by the Wall Street Journal, cargo ships have transported over 300,000 artillery shells and 1 million rounds of ammunition from Iran to Russia in the past six months. This is a significant amount of weaponry, and it's important that we keep a close eye on this situation. Well, Katie, it seems that Russia and Iran are becoming quite the dynamic duo. I suppose we could call them, Rusarin, or, I-Russia. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just glad they're not calling themselves, Irisk. That just sounds like a sneeze. All jokes aside, this is a serious issue. The United States has been made aware of these shipments, and we are monitoring the situation closely. 
we cannot allow Russia to continue to receive weapons from Iran, especially when they are being used to fuel conflict in Ukraine. That's right, Barack. It's important that we remain impartial in our reporting and not take sides in this conflict. We must focus on the facts and present them to our viewers in a clear and concise manner. Well said, Katie. As they say, the truth shall set you free. And in this article from the Wall Street Journal, the truth is that Iran has been shipping weapons to Russia. It's up to us to report on this and keep the public informed. Absolutely, Albert. It's our duty as journalists to present the facts and let the viewers make their own informed decisions. And with that, we conclude our segment on the Iran-Russia weapons shipments. Thank you for tuning in. Well, it looks like Iran and Russia are really stocking up on their ammo. Speaking of stocking up, have you seen the world's military spending lately? It's like they're preparing for a really intense game of paintball. Good evening and welcome to our news segment. Today we have a breaking news story that is sure to have an impact on the world. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, world military spending has reached an all-time high of $2.24 trillion in 2022. Wow, that's a lot of money. I could buy a lot of fireworks with that kind of cash. This surge in spending reflects the increasingly insecure world we live in. It's a sign that countries are bolstering their military strength in response to a deteriorating security environment. Well, I guess it's a good thing I'm working on getting us to Mars. Maybe we can start a new civilization there and avoid all this military spending. It's interesting to note that most of the increase in military spending is linked to Russia and Ukraine. Other countries have also stepped up their military spending in response to perceived Russian threats. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling a little nervous about all this talk of Russian aggression. Maybe we should all start learning how to speak Russian just in case. It's important to remember that military spending isn't just about buying weapons and equipment. It also includes things like research and development, which can have a positive impact on society as a whole. Well, I guess I'd better get back to work on my next big invention. Maybe I can come up with something that will make all this military spending unnecessary. Well, with all that military spending, I guess Taiwan figured they might as well put their female reservists to work too. Time to break out the combat boots and matching camo, ladies. Breaking news, Taiwan's military will begin requiring female reservists to undergo military training. This is a significant step towards gender equality in the military. I guess Taiwan is really stepping up their game. Huh? Girl power. Indeed, Katie. This is a positive development for Taiwan's military and for gender equality worldwide. Maybe they're preparing for an intergalactic war and need all hands on deck. While that may be a possibility, Elon, the Ministry of National Defense has stated that this decision is based on the belief that all veterans, regardless of gender, should have the same responsibility. Well, it's about time women are given the same opportunities as men in the military. We can do anything they can do, and look good doing it. Absolutely, Katie. Gender should not be a barrier to equal opportunities and responsibilities. In this article from CNA, it stated that as of 2021, a total of 8,915 women were listed as reservists. It's great to see Taiwan taking steps towards gender equality in the military. From military training to a chilling lawsuit, it seems like some people just can't handle the heat. Well, this is certainly a tragic story. It's important to remember that when we travel, we put our trust in the hands of others. And when that trust is broken, it can have devastating consequences. Absolutely, Barack. And it's not just the family of the deceased who are affected. This kind of news can really damage the reputation of the entire cruise industry. Yes, and it's also a reminder of the fragility of life. Even after we pass away, our bodies continue to decompose and break down. It's a natural process, but it's important that we handle it with respect and dignity. Well, I for one am glad that I'm planning on being cryogenically frozen when I die. That way, I won't have to worry about any of this decomposition business. Let's not forget that this tragedy took place in the Caribbean. It's a beautiful part of the world, but it's also home to many developing nations that may not have the same standards of care that we're used to in the United States. And let's not forget that this happened on the Celebrity Equinox, a ship that carries thousands of passengers and crew members. It's a reminder that even on a massive vessel like that, mistakes can still be made. Well, it looks like Celebrity Cruises is in for a bit of a legal battle. In this article from Townflex, we can see that the family is seeking $1 million in damages. That's a lot of money, even for a company as big as Royal Caribbean Group.